Hello and greetings from Edgar Street, home of Hereford United from 1924 until they were wound up and is now home to their Phoenix club Hereford FC. Today's game sees 18th place Hereford take on 4th place Brackley Town. Hereford find themselves 5 points above the drop zone with 4 games remaining. They should have been well safe of relegation but with just 1 goal and 2 points in the last 6 games they find themselves on the outskirts of a relegation battle. Up at the other end of the table, Brackley find themselves in 4th place and looking to keep their playoff position. While they may be at the other end of the table, their recent form is almost as bad as Hereford's and they have just 3 points in the last 6 games. In fact, based on the form guide, this is 24th versus 23rd. With very different things to play for, this game should be a corker. But before we get into that, let's see the journey there and what to do in Hereford. Timestamps are in the description below, but if you want to go to the match highlights, these begin at 10 minutes. This is the second ground in my A to Z series challenge where I'm looking to tick off a stadium with every letter from A to Z in the UK leagues between March 2023 and March 2024. If you would like to watch this, please do subscribe as there will be more similar videos and there's already one up with the letter J taking in football at Jenner Park in Barry. And as well as England, we will be watching football in Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland, but today we're in Hereford. So with that in mind, we head to Blackfriars Priory, which dates from 1319 and is a ruined priory as the name suggests. There are rose gardens around this which are maintained by local volunteers and the rose bushes have been in place since around 1964 and lots of rose beds there. It was completely free to get into this and nice to wander around and just see something slightly different on an away day. From here we wander to the renovated Old Market, one of the most commercial and newest places in Hereford with plenty of places to eat, drink and to do your shopping. I can't say I was looking to do any of those at this moment in time but it is a nice area if that's the type of thing you're into. The Beefy Boys is a particularly nice burger shop if you don't want to eat the food at the ground. There was also this pretty cool thing that was a vending machine full of local produce. Um, yeah, didn't get anything but pretty interesting to see. And this is 24-7 so it would be suitable even for after those evening kickoffs. Within metres of the old market the distinctive floodlights and we know that we can clearly see the football ground. Edgar Street was also hosting the fans forum before the game today at 12.15 um, for the, this 3 o'clock kickoff. so I thought as I was exploring the area what better way to find out more about the club than by visiting the fans forum. But before that there was still a bit of time so we did some wandering around the perimeter of the stadium and was fortunate enough to see that the doors here were open meaning that we could take a quick peek in from behind the goal at the curved meadow end. The stand the other side of the ground is called the Blackfriars Street End. This is unfortunately shut due to health and safety concerns but you may be able to see some flags in there which are meant to add to a bit of atmosphere. To the left we have Merton stand and to the right we have the Lem Western stand which is two tiered and very very steep to get up to. This is due to the proximity of the A49 road immediately behind the stand and it limited the amount of space to build. As you can see from this view it is very close to the road and there's no further that they could really go. The capacity of the ground in full is just under 5,000 and with that said it's time to head to the fans forum. Now this fans forum was held on the 10th of April by the new chairman who took post on the 1st of April. Based on the questions asked, it seemed that this was the first forum in about four years, so it's great to see there being some accountability by the club and some interaction with the fans. Conversation topics varied from finances, commercial opportunities to on the field decisions and manager opportunities. And it was quite an interesting watch, even as a neutral. Um, we, uh, we, I say we the board, Myself um, and Nick Marsh, the former secretary, have drawn up the shortlist. We had about this time 60 applicants. Once Nick had taken out. <coughs> I spent £3 on a pint of Pepsi Max in the club and we can see what £4 is going to be spent on later. Forum over, time to head to the club shop. Couldn't see any home shirts inside the club shop, but that certainly wasn't within the budget or anything I wanted. The away shirts are quite nice though, but we were on the hunt for a club badge. And there they are, three pounds, couldn't have written it better. At this point it was about 1.30, so about an hour and a half till kickoff, and plenty more to have a look at round Hereford, so off we trotted. 
and we can see a sign for the next place that we wanted to go to. That's right, Sainsbury's. When at Sainsbury's, I thought, while we're in this region, we best look at what cider they have to offer. The Museum of Cider was particularly interesting. It's free to walk into the cafe, bottle shop. But the museum itself does quite rightly charge. Now this museum is quite interesting, it's on the grounds of where the original Bulmer's cider was made and as I said earlier you can pay to go round it, there are tastings, I think that might be included with your entrance ticket but equally even if you're just into cider don't want to pay for that, there's a load of varying ciders and local liver spirits um, but there's also the more famous brand names that you'd find in the shop but if you're particularly looking to try different ciders you can see various local craft ciders in here. It's about a 10 to 15 minute walk from the stadium and costs 5 50 for a tour, so for any cider loving fans, it's a great option. From here we headed over the River Wye, why? Because I wanted to, and we can see the old bridge and the Hereford Cathedral. Hereford Cathedral, pretty impressive, and the next location that we're going to. And there it is, as advertised, we're turning up at Hereford Cathedral. The cathedral itself is free to walk around. There are two exhibits that you can pay to go and see. The first one is the Mappa Mundi, which is a 13th century map meant to be one of the most famous from the time. And they also have a chained book library, said to be the type of library that inspired the Game of Thrones library at the Citadel and those types of things. If you're into that type of thing, potentially worth paying for. When I was here on Easter Monday, the chain library was shut, um, but you could for £4 have gone and see the Mappa Monday. Normally it's £6 for a ticket and that includes both. As I walked into the cathedral, they were doing an organ recital. Um, I don't know if that was especially on because it was Easter Monday, but it was quite impressive and it got quite the applause. Due to the lack of goals scored by both of these teams in the last six games, let's hope it wasn't the biggest cheer that I heard all day. Hereford Cathedral itself is very impressive. Lots of stained glass, lots of things to see, and I don't think my video does it any justice at all. If you're in the area, even if you're not massively fussed in um, the church or anything, I would say that it's an impressive building to see from an architectural standpoint. Built in 1250 and still going strong. From here we headed out to look at potentially the Museum and Art Gallery, which was free to go around. It was shut, and it looks like it's shut on all Sundays and Mondays. Um, not sure anyone would be that fussed about going, but if you were, you'd have to be on a Saturday or Tuesday game. On the unlikely event it was a Sunday or Monday game, you wouldn't be able to see it. And from here we head into the bustling hub of Hereford. I joke, but it was particularly busy. There's a market hall in there which is normally open with various different things in there, um, food places, that type of thing. But on Easter Monday it was shut. And what we're going to see now is the Bull and the Black and White House, two of the main things to see in Hereford Centre according to TripAdvisor. Hereford are obviously famous for the Bulls, the football club has it on their logo, um, you, you know, and Hereford should be famed everywhere. The Black and White House was noted online as one of the top three things to do. I did have a look and adults had to pay entry. For children it was free, but obviously that meant that I wasn't touching it with a barge pole. And checking the time, it's now time to head to the stadium, so we had the simple task of walking through the turnstiles. Um. Oh yeah. Hiya. Cheers. Uh, wrong turnstile. Oh, wrong one. Sorry. Down there, number yeah. 16. Good number start. 16, sorry about that. There we go. Definitely in the right place. Hiya. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Brilliant, thank you. And just like that, we're in. We were in the two-tier Len Wesson stand, unusual with the standing below the seating, uh, the seating in the second tier, which I believe is particularly steep, um, but offers great views of the pitch, albeit you can't see the near touch line. After our last experience with match day food running out, we bought the posh dog that we'd seen advertised at the fans forum early. It was just a hot dog with onions and cheese for £4. Solid. Now, after eating the food, we wandered further forward to lean on one of the posts in front of us to watch the game. As you can see, if you were to watch the game from back here, your view is potentially blocked by some of the pillars, so just be a bit tactful with where you choose to stand for the match. 
Now, due to the capacity, I'm sure it wouldn't have been a problem whatsoever, but some of the busier games you'd maybe want to get there a bit earlier. And just like that, the match was underway. Now Hereford were coming into this match with only one player contracted for next season and that's our centre forward number 9 although he has been playing centre back recently. Something which the fans weren't too delighted about in the fans forum. Now Brackley had the best chances of the game so far and after 8 minutes they finally made that pay with Callum Stead at the back post scoring his 15th goal of the season. That makes him comfortably their top scorer, with the next closest player being on seven goals. Given Hereford's struggles in front of goal, this could be a long afternoon. Hereford were growing slightly more into the game, and after 24 minutes, Ryan Lloyd's run from midfield saw him score at the back post. Hereford was certainly back in the game, but they've not scored two goals since mid-February, so chances were they'd be happy with a point today, but could they push on any more? From this point on, the ball was kept on the floor more, which seemed to benefit Hereford. There was dogged defending from them, and they were able to take the ball from Brackley a number of times. Linesman's flag, the only thing stopping Brian Lord from doubling his goal tally for the afternoon and putting Hereford in front. Based on this performance alone, I was struggling to see how Brackley Town were in the playoff places. Some rain started to fall and a rainbow appeared over the meadow end, which is a sign of good things to come for Hereford. <laughs> Not on this occasion. It seemed Brackley had lost all confidence. Even something as simple as maintaining possession from a throw seemed to become difficult for them. They were giving it away here, there and everywhere. Another brilliantly worked goal for Ryan Lloyd. That could very easily have been his third of the afternoon and our second hat trick in this series in two games. Unfortunately, the earlier goal being disallowed for offside stopped that. <laughs> Would Hereford press on at this stage or were they content with a 2 1 lead? <laughs> A great chance, but a good save, sees the ball, hit the post. We were comfortably into added time, but it's safe to say Hereford didn't want that whistle to go with the way they were currently playing. So it's 2-1 at half time. A great first half for Hereford, an awful first half for Brackley, who are surely seeing their formation chances slip away. Hereford are one of the biggest clubs at this level, but have seen their attendances drop slightly due to performances on the pitch. For this match, there was around 1,350 in attendance, which is still a great number for the sixth tier of English football, but it's a dramatic decrease from where they were earlier in the season, where they could be averaging just under 2,000. Brackley had around 50 supporters and would be hoping to silence Hereford's fans. Now in the next instalment of Things You Couldn't Write, I'd just been speaking to a Hereford fan about how I'd caught all of the goals when for some reason my camera decided to auto-focus on the sky and I missed Brackley's equaliser. <laughs> Some big shouts at the linesman here that he'd missed the ball going out of play from the fans who could see. I couldn't quite see the touchline so I couldn't say anything, but it's fair to say the fans certainly weren't happy. But I'm sure the linesman won't be involved in any more controversy. Now in my very unprofessional opinion, Hereford seemed to struggle more the more the ball was in the air. They were far better when the ball was on the ground. Brackley seemed to be able to disrupt the play a bit more in the second half and were definitely the better of the team so far. It's fair to say throughout the match as a whole they probably had the better of the ball, however the better of the chances definitely fell Hereford's way.
this match did have a lot of drama. I think between the two teams, before the match, they'd scored about five goals between them in the last six games. So it's fair to say there was a slight concern this could be a nil-nil board draw. However, it was end-to-end, -end, there was a lot going on, and it was certainly value for money. The main question on my mind, would there be a winner? And just like that, the referee gives Hereford the chance to take the lead again, with a penalty given in the box for handball, much to the protests of the Brackley Town players. I never understand why these players feel the need to go up to the referee. I have never ever seen a referee change their decision because of this. I wonder if anyone else agrees. And just like that, after speaking with this linesman, the referees overturned the decision. I do think from watching the video it was correct, but still, two major decisions against Hereford by this linesman. I don't think he'll be on the Christmas card list. Fair to say, some of the fans weren't overly impressed with that decision. Now I don't know if the players felt aggrieved, but it's fair to say that Hereford really kicked on after their penalty decision was overturned. A great opportunity there, unfortunately it wasn't able to convert, it remains 2 all. Now in the final few minutes the game turned into quite a scrappy one, but these are the exact type of games that could be determined by a scrappy goal. And would that be the case today? Now this ref had let some things go, but for some reason he started being a lot stricter towards the end of the game. With Hereford fans already feeling aggrieved, he was the centre of their frustration. We were deep into added time, and I'm sure the officials were ready to get off the pitch. Now the boos weren't for the performance, I think fans were very happy with the two-all draw, but they were incensed with the refereeing performance. I do think, to be fair to the refs, a lot of the decisions were justified, but you don't often see a penalty overturned, and I think fans definitely felt that between this and the second Brackley goal, they were owed a decision by the referees. But that was full time, and at the end of the game, this was a better point for Hereford than Brackley. Hereford move up one position to 17th, but crucially are now six points clear of the relegation zone with three games to go, so that should hopefully mean that they're safe. Meanwhile, Brackley dropped down to fifth on 65 points. The team just on the bubble of the playoffs are on 63 points, but have two games in hand on them, and there's another team on 60 points that have two games in hand as well. So there is a very good chance that Brackley won't be in the playoffs by the end of the season. And based on this performance, I think that's fair enough. Now, on to the cost for the day. The ticket to get in in the standing section was £15.50, the train over cost me £7.35 and I had £10 which I spent, £3 on a pin badge, £3 on a pint of Pepsi Max and £4 on the hot dog. That brings my total to the day to around £33, which I don't think can be moaned at at all, for four goals, a great day and hopefully seeing Hereford survive in the National League North where they should be able to build next season. As for Brackley, I hope that they are able to get into the playoffs and hopefully do well for themselves. However, based on today's performance, I think if they were to get into the playoffs, they'd potentially be setting them fans up for heartbreak. And that's the end of today's video. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this. If anyone's got any ideas of any grounds they'd like me to go to, please put them in the comments and I'll be more than happy to look into it.